It's taken nearly two decades, but this week we finally learned what happened to Natalie Holloway when she disappeared back in 2005. The prime suspect finally confessing to killing her as part of a plea deal. For 18 years, the Holloway family searched for answers as to how their daughter died. Now they know. It's over. Yaron Vandersloot is no longer the suspect in my daughter's murder. He is the killer. Your and Vandersloot also pleaded guilty to wire fraud and extortion of Natalie's mother. According to a transcript of his confession, Vandersloot said he killed the Alabama teen with a cinder block after she rejected his sexual advances on the beach, then pushed her body out to sea. Here to talk about this case is Hector Diaz once again of Diaz Law. All right, we're talking about a completely different case, so to speak. Why would he confess in this case? So a couple things. Um you know, he no doubt has been negotiating this kind of resolution of the of the extortion case. Yeah. And, you know, federal prosecutors probably saw an opportunity here to not just give him a plea that would avoid the Holloways going to trial on the extortion case, but maybe also get him to provide closure to the Holloway family. To Which admit. they needed after right. so many years. Absolutely. Okay, so now that he confessed, though, will be will he be charged with murder? So he will unlikely unlikely to be charged. So a couple things. One is you have an offense that occurred in Aruba. So mm -hmm. the U.S. doesn't have jurisdiction for a crime that occurred in Aruba. Mm -hmm. The other issue is that Aruba has a 12-year statute of limitations. You know, they, uh, you know, the reports are that the Aruban officials are going to be looking, you know, that country is going to be looking at this, continuing to review it, but it, it looks like he's not going to be charged wow. with murder in this case. Oh, that is crazy. Okay, so will he serve his sentence in the U.S., though, for this extortion? So, you know, this is, a, this is an individual that not only is he facing the 20-year sentence here in this case, but he's also in Peru right. serving 28 years for a murder of another young lady. Exactly. And so that, you know, the benefit of the plea here is that he is going to serve the 28 years in Peru concurrent with the 20-year sentence that he's serving in the U.S., meaning those sentences are going to run at the same time. Okay. After he finishes Peru, this sentence is likely going to be exhausted, so he'll probably never serve a day in, in U.S. custody. So this, wow. this plea was a real benefit for, for Vandersloot, but it's a situation where the family had been after closure for years and years and years and, and finally got it. Yeah, uh, it's bittersweet. Absolutely. You know? Okay, so the last case I want to talk about involves Alec Baldwin. Turns out he may not be off the hook for the death of Helena Hutchins on the set of Rust After All. The actor was holding a prop gun he says he thought was loaded with blanks when it went off. Prosecutors dropped involuntary manslaughter charges against him in the matter earlier this year, and now they say new information has come to light. They think shows Baldwin has criminal culpability. They're set to present their case within the next two months. All right, so can prosecutors actually recharge Alec Baldwin when they dropped it earlier? You know, he, he was charged earlier but those charges were dismissed with what's called without prejudice, which allows those prosecutors to refile because either they believe they're going to get new evidence. In this case, you know, it's very likely that Baldwin's lawyers were put on notice when they dismissed that we might be back. We might be back here based on really the forensic evidence, the firearm that, that really was, again, at the center of this case. Yeah. So why refile them now, though? In, is it in light of that new evidence? So... When they dismissed the last time, there were a couple of things going on. You had a situation where you had a special prosecutor who was accused of, of essentially, you know, having a conflict because they were using, you know, this high profile trial to kind of promote their political career. Right. That was a huge issue. The other issue was that in looking at the firearm, there was some concern that that firearm had been modified. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that modification, that's what caused the unfortunate, you know, the, what was characterized as an accident. Right. The state has gone back and looked at it. Okay. They've gone back and looked at the firearm and said, wait, you know, they had another expert. Right. There's a, a bit of an Arizona connection here. I was going to ask about that. Speaking of that firearm, what's that connection? So the expert that, at least from what the reports indicate, the expert that has reviewed this firearm is, is a, an individual that is, uh, again, nationally known but based here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Looks like the prosecutors in this case had him look at it. And, and it appears that his opinion is that there is no way that that firearm would have fired 
absent somebody pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. The issue for Baldwin is that Baldwin had made statements before that he never touched the trigger. Right. And so it's, uh, this is gonna be, it's, again, I expect that the grand jury will likely charge Baldwin again okay. with the involuntary manslaughter. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna have a situation where, you know, again, he has very fine legal counsel, they're going to fight, and it's gonna be a battle of the experts. This yeah. is going to be an issue of whether or not Baldwin was reckless in handling this gun, or was this an accidental discharge again? He's an actor, right? Mm -hmm. He's not, mm -hmm. this is not, uh, you know, an expert in firearms. He's right. not, you know, he's an actor, has to rely on people there on the set that they have secured that weapon. And so, um, you know, I don't, as I indicated previously, I, this isn't the case where I, I see Baldwin taking a plea to anything. Okay. If he's charged, this is going to be a trial. So you're a criminal defense attorney. Say you are representing Alec Baldwin. Are you concerned? Are you worried about this? You know, I think I would have expected it. Okay. You know, those lines of communication with the DA are going to be open. And you're going to know that, listen, they're not done looking at the firearm. And so here it's a situation where they, you know, undoubtedly the defense has had their, they have their own expert that's going to uh, refute it. But I mm -hmm. think they're going to wait and see, is he going to be charged? And if they're going to make their case, they're not going to make it in the media. They're going to make it in court. Yeah. All right, Hector, always, always great insight from you. We so appreciate your time and insight.